Hey everybody, my name is Jamie and we're moving on to part 10 of our tutorial series. So in this series, we are in this uh, tutorial, we're going to start loading in our world from an external file and uh, we'll be creating a few utilities and things that we'll need to be uh, using in order to do this. So first off, before we begin, I want to let everyone know that uh, I got a special a promotional code for uh, evolved servers this is uh, the company that I use right now to host and right now if you're using if you're um, following my tutorial series you can use a special uh, a special promo code to get first months free off of any of the uh, virtual server packages so that means you can even get your first month completely free uh, on a $75 VPS if you want. So you just have to use this promo code at checkout and the promo code is GAME2D. Now I'll put something up here just so you can see it there. I'll throw a link in the description but again the promo code is GAME2D and that will let you get your first month completely free uh, through EvolvedServers.com. Uh, so go there, check it out and uh, and grab one of these while you get the chance. So moving on, let's start get going with our tutorial. So what we're going to need to do is create a new a new uh, package called utilities or utils. So we'll go create new directory and this will be utils. And we're going to create some utilities uh, so that we can use them uh, to grab some files. So we'll create the utils.js file or utils. And as always, we're going to define the class. So define. We're going to take into this jQuery and we'll take class like so. Um, and you know what? We won't take class for now. We don't need class. I'm going to pass in the jQuery object as the money sign. And let's define a object real quick. We'll say var utils. Set it equal to a blank object. We're going to have static methods in this class. So we won't have a constructor. We'll just actually use the static method, uh, static methods. All right. So the first one we need to create utils dot load file as string. Set this equal to a function that grabs a path. So what we're going to use this to do is at, we'll be able to pass in a path and return the contents as a string to whatever function we want to uh, you know then parse the string and however we want to parse it. The first thing we need to do in here say var string oops string we're gonna set equal to a blank string. Now we will create an Ajax call and in here we will have URL we'll set that to the path the type and we're going to set type to get we won't have any post data we're going to set async equal to false so that it will actually wait until the files loaded to proceed and then success will run a function getting the contents of the file and in there we will set string equal to contents and then if we fail to load the string we will error just create a function that will alert <laughs> file and then the path we will put the path to the file there and say can not be loaded. So therefore if for some reason it's not able to grab the content of the 
the file, then we will have an error. So we'll close the Ajax call and just return return the string. And it's as simple as that. This will uh, this will create an Ajax call going to the path of the file that we pass in um, using it you know not throw, we're not passing any data so we'll just set type to get and asynchronous so that uh, set that to false so that it will wait until the file content is received before we continue on and uh, if we're successful we'll set string to the content and if we aren't successful we will alert that there was an error and we weren't able to load the file so lastly down here we will say return utils and this will return uh, the utils object so we have access to the uh, method load file as string that was really important because this will be you know the background what actually grabs our file for us so if we go back to our world class now we can go down into our load world function and let's get rid of our loop that we're using now and start coding this all right so first thing we will say file is equal to utils dot load file as string and we'll pass in the path now we do want to include utils so we have to go to our app and come down here and say utils that's in app slash classes slash utils slash utils make sure to put your comma then in our world class up here it looks like we do have an error we need to close that that was the error there make sure to close your uh, array alright so come up to the top of our file and we will add utils here and we'll access it like so now we have access to that function load file as string which will place or which will send us the actual uh, content of the file so now we will create a new one called tokens and that'll be file dot replace so this will replace uh, the string that was returned and what we're doing here replacing uh, any new lines we're, we're removing them so that they uh, we're essentially ignoring any lines and that's what this done exactly like I have here will do so this will remove any uh, any line returns then what we'll do is split the results of that by a space and I'll show you why uh, when we create our file so uh, that should be good set width equal to tokens zero and I, uh, I feel like you know at this point what I'll do is that let's create our file um, so you can see kind of what we're doing and why we're doing it this way so what I will do is I will come out of our JS folder I'll keep, we can keep that open go down to our resources we'll create a new folder oops a new folder and we'll call that folder worlds so worlds and in here let's create a new file which will be a new world so this one we can set as whatever we want so I'm just gonna actually create a new file in there we'll call it world one dot um, w r d all right we'll just you can call it whatever you want as long as you have the right extension when you're loading it in and all right so what we're going to have in here is a few things so we'll have 
the width and the height and then the spawn position like so so this is the width this is the height this is the spawn tile and um, in the X in the spawn tile in the Y so that will get us to a specific tile so you know X 23 and uh, 20 to uh, 20 down so and I'm going to change these from 20 let's just set that to 5 and set this to 5 all right so underneath here now we will define our map so how this will work is we will have a space between each ID of a tile so I will say tile two, two, and two, space two, space two, space two, and we're not going to have 80 either. So let's just have this, let's say 20 by 20. And I'm going to, I'm just going to copy this down. So we build our we build it like so by having a new line obviously being a new part of uh, a new row of the map so these are all rows the first tile in the row so we do need to have 20 of them so we have 20 so we start here which is two down so we have 20 there and then uh, I will start creating uh, the other part. So I'm going to have two, 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 two. I'm just building out a map. Two, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 12, 13, 14, 17, 18, 19, 20. I'm going to copy this, put it down at the very bottom. So I'm creating kind of just like a, a, uh, a barrier and and it, it won't really do anything yet because we don't have collidable tiles yet we haven't did any collision stuff so oops let's let's just fill this out I'm gonna come down here oops come down here I'm pressing alt and that lets me grab uh, kind of like a box shape right here so we can fill in all these so zero, zero. I'm just filling this up with zeros by hitting space and the zero and then we'll close that with two so what we've got now is just a map with a bunch of zeros we can throw in rocks and we can throw in our other tiles anywhere we'd like just by doing it like that so I'm just gonna build something simple one one and you can kind of see this is literally like kind of look similar to the map when we're done and our spawn point will be one two three four five one two three four five somewhere around here so I won't put any I'll just leave that as a regular dirt or grass tile all right so I'm just gonna keep it something simple like this and this is the structure for our map we basically give it the width the height and the uh, the spawn point for now so I'm going to save this and we will go back here and continue off so the first so what we did is got rid of all the lines and just did it by spaces and we know that the first four um, places in our tokens array will be specific to the map and not just and not tile data so tokens one will be our height and spawn X be equal to tokens two spawn Y will be equal to tokens tokens three all right, so we've got those. Now I'm going to come up here and oh, we did say this this dot. This cuz we're actually referring to 
the object that we created because we want it to be made specifically for this world. So this, and I'm going to come up here and say this dot. Well, we don't need to set it up there. All right, and I'm going to remove the width and height because we're actually going to set that here. So now we've got everything we need except for one thing. We do need to take that position and multiply the spawn x and spawn y by tile dot tile width. And the same thing for height, tile dot tile height. Because we were giving tiles that we we're going to be placed on, not pixels. So this will get that number in pixels. And so from here, let's create a loop to get the rest of uh, to actually create the map. So we'll say for y is equal to 0, come on, 0, y is less than height, y plus plus, and we will say for x is equal to 0, x is less than, and we need to put this, this dot height, this dot width and x plus plus and in here we are going to basically do kind of what we did uh, with the other for loop but with data now that is specific to the map so first we'll say if tiles x is not defined then we'll define it so, oops, and it's this dot tiles, and this dot tiles x, y, and we're going to set that equal to our tile now. So we will say it's equal to parse int. So we're going to make sure we parse this as an integer so that it knows not to use it as a string or anything like that we're going to parse it as an actual integer tokens and we will say x plus y times this dot width and then we will say plus four all right so what this does is this is our way of getting to which part of uh, which part of the array will contain that token. So again, we, we have them in a kind of like a box right now. But when we're done with everything, it'll actually all be on one string. It'll be in one one line, okay? And uh, and then we break that line up to create an array that has each of these in a uh, in an index of that array. So when using this math, x plus y times this times uh, width, and uh, adding four so that we get, you know, because our first four were, um, our first four were our information about the, the uh, width, height, and spawn positions. So that's why we add four there. So using this, we'll actually get a position in the array to look at and that will return the index that was in there so uh, or the ID that we had in there so that would be 0 1 or 2 right now so this is actually setting now what tile instance or tile ID we're going to use in this position of the array so then when we come down to our render and we get the position X and Y we actually uh, and we pass it in here, which I'm going to make underscore because it is passed in. Uh, we're getting the tile ID that we specified in our map. So with this information alone, um, we should be able to load in our map. Now we won't be placed anywhere. We haven't got the character placed anywhere specifically because um, we're not using the spawn X and spawn Y. So he will just be placed wherever we placed him originally. But let's take a look, see what errors we have and we can fix. So 
So world learn line 37, I've got an error. Tokens. Oh, I have to close this parenthesis around here. All right. And that's just so that we have everything closed in nice and neat. All right, and it's not able to find class because it's class is not class. I did that before. So we'll go to our app.js and say classes. All right, so what we need to do, it looks like because we are calling this jQuery, um, jQuery actually uses or actually is prepared for require.js and they define theirs as jQuery with lowercase. We're going to keep it uppercase. Um, in order to do that, we're just going to go into our jQuery. We're going to come down and find uh, a spot down at the bottom that says uh, define. And when you see it, it's going to say jQuery and then it will say uh, you know, it'll have a blank um, blank array here. What we're going to do is remove everything before function and save it. All right. So now, now that that is done, we have this ready to be used the way that we've been um, wanting it to, to uh, use jQuery. So our utils is going to pull jQuery, which we, we defined the path there, and we define the module. Um, all in this so or we, we create the alias in there so now that should work correctly um, the only thing that that is going to happen which I was prepared for before is we will have a a Mario but we won't have anything behind him and that's because we actually have to pass in the path to our file so where we do that is in our game state so if we open up our game state class let me it to that we will go to our game state class which is an app classes uh, states game state and when we create our world we're passing in a blank string and in our world file here we pass in the path then we send the path to the load world and the load world sends it to the utility that loads the file. So um, let's see what happens if we go to the game state and pass in our path. So we will say resources slash worlds slash world one, I believe, dot uh, WRD. So we'll make sure it's world one. Oops, world one dot wrd save that refresh our page here see if we get that error okay property zero of undefined world line 37 so we'll go to line 37 in our world and it's saying property zero of undefined so let's see parse integer and it looks like it might be this right here so let's, let's see if that's it oh it is it is it um, I forgot we had we're checking but we're not actually setting it so we'll say this dot tiles X is equal to a blank array just like we did before so that's the error that happens basically what's saying is if the tile um, if we haven't defined what this is whether it's an array or what um, and we go to put an item into an index it doesn't know that this um, this is going to be an array so it doesn't know to push anything so that's why it's not able to put anything in there 
at the index of 0 because it doesn't have that property. Um, so now that it's an array, we'll be able to push in y into that uh, into the array. So we will refresh our page and look at this. We have a map, but what we don't have is our player property render of undefined. Let's refresh the page and that's world 48. So we'll go to 48 and it doesn't have X, uh, XY here. So what are we doing wrong to where when we pass this into uh, into the um, function it doesn't return a instance. So we will look and let's first do a console dot we will come in here. We'll say console dot log and we'll say this dot tiles x and y. So let's figure out what we're returning here. So it looks like we're returning values and then we have a NAN. So this could be something to do with our world file. So we will say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 19, 20. Then we come down here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Ah, so that's the problem. I did not put a full 20 in our map. So we have to actually make our map with the specifications that we set. All right. Now we could, what we could do is just make our map and I could not set the uh, the array size, um, the width and height, and we can actually get that from dynamically reading this. But we're going along with Code More, which I believe he has to actually set how big his arrays are going to be. We're in JavaScript, it's much looser. We don't have to set those. We can just push and push and push into it. So I'm going to save this and now render here. And there we go, finally. So now we have our tiles being rendered and he does not seem to go very smooth, but that's because I've got a lot of stuff uh, running. The screen capture is kind of bogging everything down today and a few other stuff, but he's moving around and uh, regardless of this speed of my computer he's moving at a set 250 pixels or so or so something like that maybe 50 I can't remember what we set it to but he's moving per second so regardless of how slow our machine is um, oh I know he's running so slow that's because we are continually console.logging so to get rid of that um, that should up our our performance. So whenever you console.log every tick or every render, it's going to cause a real big bog because that's kind of a big process. There we go. No, it's not console. It's not logging anything to the console. Um, and he's moving a lot smoother. Now the only problem is, you know, now when we go off the screen, he nothing moves, nothing's changing. But you can definitely tell that we have this map and it's exactly what we set up. Um, so now what we need to do is in the next video let's create a game camera so that we can actually follow him around the screen um, and we can view that whole map. So we'll do that in the next video.